have a question. Are you fishing with Jesus? Are you fishing for Jesus? And I believe there's so many of us, and even myself, have done both of those. And, and I'm learning to, to distinguish and to fish with Jesus as opposed to for him. And to describe that, I just want to share a little bit about what these two mean. Um, fishing for Jesus is something I did very not long after he called me to start following him. And I felt in my heart like he wanted me to do something for him. And so I began walking. Um, but yet I'm going to honestly with a lot of fear because this is the Lord we're talking about. And I began to, um, you know, step out in faith and, and do things and, and expecting him to show up. But yet he's showing me, um, he's shown me so much over these years of following him. And you know, when the Lord, when we start walking with him, so often we're very results driven. And he's, he's, uh, he's shown me after all these years, and he's still showing me that what he's after is my own, my own heart. And out of my heart that's fully yielded to him, he will do whatever he wants to through me. And that's, that's his business. But at first, I was very others-driven. I was results-driven in the church, and, and that didn't work out too well. And so I, I want to I bring some clarity into what I'm talking about here because when um, I was walking with the Lord and, and learning to go fishing with Him, but yet I, I confused that with fishing for Him, I, I, what I was doing is I was looking as, as myself as the uh, originator of what I was going to do for Jesus. And, uh, and, and, and I didn't understand till I came to the end of myself later on down the road that, that what was happening is, um, is I began to try to control him and invite him into these things I was actually doing for him to see if he would show up and how he would show up. And you know what, because he's God and he's so graceful and so <clears throat> merciful, he did use <clears throat> a lot of the things that I was doing for him. But it, it was never, uh, there was never a, a rest about it in my own heart. And there was never huge results uh, because I wasn't fully yielded to him as I was doing it. There was a lot of fear of man. Uh, there was a lot of um, control in my own heart uh, and limiting him, really, because I was not, um, it almost, uh, I always see things in pictures. It was almost like I was inviting him into my boat and letting him be a part of what I was going to do for him so he could see. And I would watch and, and see how he was going to respond. If he was going to applaud and uh, do something in the lives of others. And that I was, you know, there, there was always a, a very much still awareness of myself. And that is the problem. And because I was aware of myself moving for him, I wasn't as aware of what he, of him, my full attention upon him to see what he would do. And so, um, and there was so much striving. And you know, human, anything that originates in the flesh has to do, eventually leads to death. As we know, as Romans 8 says, that the, the spirit gives life. The flesh is no avail. So when I put my flesh in uh, and, and invited him into my boat, and there was so much awareness of myself that I wasn't able to fully experience the joy of what it really is to serve him, to know him and to walk with him. But yet, there is a time and it's still happening where he's saying, you know what, like um, in Matthew uh, 4 and um, verse 19, when Jesus is calling the, the disciples, he said, in verse 19, it says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. And I love that, that whenever we begin truly fishing with him, the first thing we do is we say, we yield our nets to him and we go and we follow him. And so there's, we have to let go. And I look at it like when you let go of your net, you're letting go of control and just saying, here's my net. You are the Lord of my net. And this, this applies in every area of our lives because I believe maybe not just in ministry, but even as a, um, there's nets that he's showing me I've been holding on to. Maybe in ministry I've been able to let go, but maybe in my parenting I haven't. Maybe over this one child that, that um, I struggle 
to understand and to communicate with, then, you know, I don't, I hold on to that net because I want to have something to do with what God's going to do in their life instead of just yielding that net and saying, you are the Lord, you are the Lord. Maybe it's in my marriage often. Sometimes I get scared of things that have happened in my marriage and I don't know how to respond or we're moving into a new season and I feel disoriented and I began to cling to that net and he says, let go. And I just say, Jesus, you are the Lord of this net. You're the Lord over the how-to and you're the Lord over all the catching that's going to happen. And you're the Lord of the results of what's going what's gonna to come. And so there's something that shows up when all of a sudden he gets in your boat, but you realize he's the Lord over it and you release that net and you realize he's the Lord of this boat. He's the Lord of the ocean. He's the Lord over the fish in the ocean. He's the Lord of me. And you yield. And when you yield and you truly give up, there's no more of that striving. There's just nothing but a peaceful resting, knowing that Jesus is the Lord and he's sovereign over everything going on in my life, over every area where I'm trying to hold on and let go and release it to him instantly. There is that presence of peace that is gives testimony that, yes, we are yielded. When he's Lord and he's on the throne of every area of our lives, there's it's impossible to, ex, ex, to uh, experience anything but peace because he is the Prince of Peace. And when we make him Lord, that peace comes as a witness to us. And um, when he's in charge, there is rest. And because there's rest and we get to yield all of the results and we're not looking. Uh, I used to look at what was going to jump into the net. And um, as, as almost like I was looking for that as a testimony to um, his lordship. Instead of just letting him be Lord and trusting whatever came into the net. He was sovereign over whether it was nothing and sometimes it is sometimes you give him your net and you're like okay what's gonna happen now when there's nothing happening but yet he is the Lord over it all and we get to trust and have rest and say oh I praise you that it I don't see it yet but I know I know you're here and even the the awareness that you're here is the greatest thing I could ever ask for and sometimes that is it like sometimes we have that hunger and that thirst to see something we want him to do in our net when really he wants us to let go of the net and experience him. And then we realize, oh, this is what I needed more than I thought that thing that I I, I wanted and, uh, and that he is what we need. And at the end of the day, he's all we need. And if we have him and we have nothing else, we have everything. But if we don't have him and we have all these things that we think we need caught in our lives, we don't have anything. And so there's a thankfulness when we release that. And um, I know when there was something that um, I used to, I, I, when I, I always see things in pictures and it feels to me like whenever I was asking Jesus to step into my boat and uh, it felt like I was holding the net and I was tr waiting to catch all these fish and see what he was going to do. But what happened when it says that they let go of their net, it feels to me like instead of the one holding the net, I actually become the net that he cast into. And, and just having his hands on me and having knowing that and what it is to be fully held in him, that is the greatest blessing. And there's nothing, nothing like that just to be held in his hands and that he would use me to go and cast in and ca to catch anything and, and that any resulting from me being held in him is because of him. So that when I'm fully yielded to him and I am fully his net that he's casting into the ocean, anything he does through my life is from him and all I can do is have gratitude. And so that's the difference between fishing for Jesus and fishing for with Jesus. And I want to read a little poem I wrote as I was really discovering this. And I'm I'm not any expert. I'm not saying that I have truly arrived, but he is always still working with me. But um, I just felt like I wanted to share that little part of what he's shown me today. Here's this poem. Uh, it's called Fishing with Jesus. It says, come cast into the deep, dear one. Set your fear aside. Come sit beside me here, sweet child. In me, you've nothing to hide. I know the water is deep, dear child, and you can't see what works below. It's scary to give up our nets, isn't it? 
Your pleading eyes say it all. Please don't make me go. Take my hand, my beloved bride. Let me calm your restless heart. Come stand inside this boat with me. Together we'll make a brand new start. You see, my precious little one, when you cast into the sea, what your priceless heart is doing is casting into me. And in my heart there waits for you a treasure I long to give. So come, sweet priceless bride, come that you may live and breathe a brand new breath of life like you have never known. I'll give you my breath, dear one, for you to call your own. Come climb unknown mountains and, and tame a restless sea. I'll watch you grow into everything I created you to be. So take my hand and come with me as we cast into the deep. In exchange for your faith in me, I'll give you my net to keep. You'll climb unknown mountains. You'll tame a restless sea. You'll lose yourself in this adventure and be fully found in me. Jesus, I pray for anyone listening or anyone that you uh, just caused to fall upon this video, Lord, that you would allow them at this moment to let go of the, any nets they're holding on to in whatever area of their life, Lord, where they're trying to control instead of you being the master and controller of them. Oh, Lord, give them that witness of your peace. Let them have that joy of knowing this adventure really doesn't begin until we fully yield to you and let you fully be the Lord of our lives and let us go fishing with you and spend every moment of our day just lost in this adventure of fishing with you. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We exalt your name of Jesus over our lives, our hearts, our minds, and over our circumstances. We love you and, and uh, thank you for being the Lord of our life. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for letting me share this moment with you. God bless you. I love you.